Good everyone. My name is Indy Kato. I work with Abuja Discourse under the Lidari Foundation. And this is our 16 days of activism conversations on gender-based violence. Of course, 16 days of activism is a couple of days set aside by the UN Women, starting on international, um, on a day against um, the abuse of women, gender-based abuse, and then it ends on International Human Rights Day, which is the 10th of December. And this year, we have been in partnership with OSIWA, holding conversations daily against sexual harassment, rape, gender-based violence. This year's theme is Generation Equality Stands Against Rape. And with me, actually, as members of Generation Equality, on my right, I hope it translates us right, on my right is Genevieve Pelle, who comes from Opogo. Sorry, I had to add that. I've not seen someone from Opogo before. It's really exciting. And Gift and Were and Lovely Omar. They are from Bayes University, law students, actually LOSA Exco. Happy that this has produced LOSA female president after female president after female president, and we hope we continue to <laughs> maintain that. Okay, so um, today we're talking about gender um, sexual harassment in in tertiary institutions. And it was really interesting to bring them here because actually we based them together with these young women. We had actually organized the screening, the Abuja screening for the Sex for Greats BBC video. And that was really enlightening. I think that work opened a lot of eyes to certain things. And it was, I felt it was right to continue the conversation here today. So we'll start with um, on the issue of sexual um, harassment in schools. You know, we've spoken about this so much, and I'm sure that BBC video got a lot of people talking, made people concerned, and should have made us really go to check. You in private schools, or in a private school, which, well, should be better. But after that video, or your research so far, how deep is this rot, especially from your friends who are in other schools, and how deep is the rot of sexual harassment in Nigerian universities? Okay, I'll start, I'll start with lovely. Okay, so um, in my research, knowing that, okay, I'm not just a student, a base student, I'm a law student, and a member of Los Sand, Nigeria, and they, um, a directorate of that has gone into trying to um, research and find those victims and then awareness and all of that. Yeah, I've met a lot women. It, it's it's a gen it's mostly something that females fa um, face, yeah. and it has caused mostly psychological issues for them. It has made them even even if they graduate at the end of the day, they can't go past that. It's like a, um, an issue that they cannot forget. So in my research, it's it's getting worse, honestly, because mm -hmm. apart from the BBC that is coming out now to say, okay, we want this to change. We want you know, lecturers to be accountable for what mm -hmm. they do. It's literally something you have to go through. You, you, there's a lady that um, every time she enters a class in Uni Abuja, this is Uni Abuja, and it's actually a true life story. Every time she enters a class, the lecturer always sends her out because she refused his advances. Oh, wow. So that's like, okay, you can't even learn anything. You, can't you learn don't know sense. anything. Yes. So how are you going to pass? You know, we've had many reports of even females that, um, you know, have to, the latest one that really made me, you know, got me very emotional was when I talked to a, um, a lawyer that I knew. And then I knew her as, okay, she's okay, she's confident. But she joined the directorate that I'm in with the Law Students Association of Nigeria mm -hmm. and she was talking about her experiences and saying that she was in this situation in Uni Abuja. She was going yeah, to Uni Abuja again. Yeah, Uni Abuja, it's really wow. bad. In Uni Abuja now, they're saying even female lecturers, uh, there was a male lecturer, that, a male student that went to the office of the female lecturer with a gun, threatening to kill her because she doesn't want to graduate him because he didn't agree for her. Advice. My God, exactly. wow. Exactly. You could imagine. Wow. So the, the rot of this thing is a mostly public university and they are going through a lot. Good graduating with first class has nothing to do with your brain capacity. It has I mean, something to do with how more, how much you're willing to satisfy those lecturers, which is really bad and really, really, really And terrible. um gift. You had the loss you had loss at in Bayes University. Yes. Congrats on that work, it's difficult. Um, Thank you. what can you say are the effects on um or the attitude of university and how the universities and how they manage this. You know, since you found about this, you found about victims and victims actually go to report these things. How are these cases managed? Is this, uh, and, and victims served or survivors? No victims because it's still ongoing. Yeah. Yeah. And victims served justice or what happens? 
Um, first of all, it's important for us to know that um, sexual harassment is something that is critical in uh, tertiary institutions. Yes. And um, most times when these victims come mm -hmm. to report, because most institutions put up like a body or an organization where students could go and report to them about these advances or sexual inappropriate sexual remarks mm -hmm. made to them. But then one problem faced is that most of those people put in those positions are people of the older generations. Mm -hmm. So students find it really difficult to um, address those issues with people of older generations mm -hmm. because they believe that, oh, you can't really understand what I'm going mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. So when you meet someone, a, a woman of like 50, 55, 60, mm -hmm. and I go, for example, to report to her about um, sexual advances, they most times take the side of the lecturer saying maybe because of your dressing mm -hmm. they don't really want to understand so instead of trying to protect the victim mm -hmm. they make it look like oh it's your fault so that's like one of the challenges despite the fact that okay institutions try to like put up bodies or organizations they should try and understand that they should also bring um up people in those um organizations that mm -hmm. would understand or relate um, with people of the younger generation because a lot of victims have actually met they're like oh i can't tell anybody because they will never understand at the end of the day they will make me more tra traumatized about the whole um, situation so they prefer to keep it to which themselves. means universities are actually setting up these bodies they say to help combat it within the school but there's no orientation yeah. So they just enter with the same mindset of okay, so your yeah, lecturer expects you to know. Mom, and know. most times the of the um sorry, most times the people who are also part of the organizations exactly. are also lecturers. Exactly. So yeah. how would the lecturer try to like protect a student when exactly. maybe he or she has a friend or he or she is part of, of I, I remember mm -hmm. when I was young, I grew up in university environment because my mom was a lecturer. A good lecturer, everybody everybody would tell you that, but you know, um, there was this lecturer that harassed the student that would constantly fail mm -hmm. her, so the students finally, student finally reported. And then they took her, her, her uh, exam sheet to her answer sheet to another university for another lecturer to mark, let them see if what she was saying was the truth. Unfortunately for her, the lecturer in the other university was friends with the lecturer in the other university. He just gave her two points ahead of what the other man gave her. It was, yes, I, I grew up seeing these things. It was very traumatic. So, Genevieve, Genevieve today, I thought I'll make a joke about it, and here I am, <laughs> making an obvious joke about it. Genevieve has her paper, her phone, and I don't want her to feel awkward about it because what she's going to do today is very important. You're going to talk about sexual harassment being in tertiary institutions. Yes. And it's, this is important, so don't feel, and I don't think I would have been able to get anything in my head about it, how you're about presenting. And you're going to talk about this bill and how it's going to affect students. Yes. Right? I think it was past first reading. Yes, yes. You know, it's and in the second one. It's in the second reading. And I mean, we should give ourselves a little clap because, you know, the, the Office of the Deputy Senior President actually came and presented it. And the work with, with um, Abu Dhabi Discus, Bayes University, actually brought enough input from women stakeholders, women experts, and this has influenced um, this bill. But yeah. Come here. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to note is the fact that the bill was introduced in 2016, it was actually passed, but it was rejected because it didn't have um, a sexual harassment uh, framework for the workplace. Yeah. And also, it included that there was a defense of consent for the lecturers. Mm -hmm. So the bill, as it would have been in 2016, mm -hmm. during the 8th Senate, yeah. would have allowed a lecturer who claims that there was consent Mm -hmm. to escape liability. And when uh, Senator Ovie Omar Gege was talking about this bill, he said that this one is important by removing consent because it makes this crime, this heinous crime, statutory rape. Yeah. So normally in the criminal and penal code, the statutory rape is for a minor. But in my view, what he was trying to say was that a woman that is put in such a situation, or That's a young pressure, girl, yes. yes it removes all the power mm -hmm. and it actually incapacitates her. Mm -hmm. It makes her revert back to the stage of a minor mm -hmm. who feels like she has no say or no right. Yeah. Because if you know that the lecturer has the power, then you will most likely consent yeah. under duress or any false pretense to make sure that you get what you want, which is your grades, which is to graduate, or which is to not be further harassed 
Yeah. Or surrounded by the lecturer. So removing consent is one of the things I love, the strong points of this book. Yeah. Because that fiduciary duty that the lecturer owes his students, yeah. he puts them just as a parent would be, or a guardian. And once you breach that duty, yeah. the severity should be noted. And that's what this bill does. Yeah. Another thing it uh, does is... Can I just pause to say how brilliant you people are? Really are like, I'm like, ah, are these university students? But, but carry on, yeah. yeah. So this clause 6 gives some power back to the students. Mm. So removing consent is very necessary. And, you know, they always have this notion that once they have power or once they say this, I saw it in that documentary, the BBC documentary. They mm -hmm. always say, what will you do? Or no one will know. Or mm -hmm. all those yeah. things. That's what I said, I was reporting to your mother. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So all those things they say, when any woman or girl is made aware of this, mm -hmm. and she knows that it's actually statutory rape he's going for. Yes. And he could get anywhere from, anywhere from two years if, to five years if it's a lesser crime, mm -hmm. and then five years to 14 years if it's a yeah. major crime, mm -hmm. then she will have the power to say no in that room mm -hmm. so that at least consent is not an issue. And even if, unfortunately, she is forced into something she, was, she didn't want, he cannot say that because of her dressing or her actions yeah. that he is exempted. And the thing I like that Bill doesn't talk about is the dress code. You know, we've all talked about it. They will say, oh, how about girls that dress yes. like Avengers, <laughs> Jezebel or something? <laughs> well, the senator again said something brilliant about that. Mm -hmm. He said that in the first place, the, the onus is on the university mm -hmm. to enforce any dress code that they have. Mm -hmm. So if someone is not meeting the dress code standard, then you're not being effective yes. in your monitoring. Mm -hmm. And then the lecturer can also file a complaint, can mm -hmm. flag the student for the dress code. And if there's evidence to show, then she can be addressed in that mm -hmm. manner. But it's not for you to use anything to blame her, mm -hmm. to say, oh, I was provoked or I was enticed. Yeah. So that's one thing I like that the bill is silent on. And then, of course, marriage is... Um, a defense in clause 5 of the bill. This makes sense because if you're married, then of course there's a presumption of consent. Then if anything happens and you're a student who is married to a lecturer, maybe you can uh, look for redress under marital rape, but it won't come under the bill. So it makes sense that marriage is actually a defense for the lecturers in this bill. Then I'll go just a little bit more because I'm excited the bill has a lot of good things if it is implemented properly mm -hmm. of course we always face the problem in nigeria where a lot is down on paper and yeah. implementation, mm -hmm. implementation, is implementation is a different thing, thing. yes exactly. exactly but let's still talk about this one there's another major thing that i think this bill does expulsion is prohibited where a female student makes a false complaint mm -hmm. against the lecturer under the bill Thank you, yes. because that would be used to scare females. Exactly. Yeah. And well, the this is, is excellent. And the thing is, this bill is trying to protect a woman's right to education and her freedom to do exactly. so. So if she reports falsely and you expel her, hasn't it defeated the purpose of the bill? Mm -hmm. So it's good that there's no provision for expulsion yeah. if yeah. she reports. Mm -hmm. She can be fined, she can be jailed, she can mm -hmm. be suspended and all mm -hmm. that. But the fact that expulsion is prohibited is one good thing. So that at least on her record, even if she wants to change to another university, she can do so without having I mean, so much um, yes, yes. yes. Wow. and then um, the last thing is no option for a fine for any term of imprisonment under the bill so if a lecturer is guilty of a minor exactly. offense five to two years imprisonment mm -hmm. there's no option of option a fine. Of you either pay this exactly. or you go you are going to jail exactly mm -hmm. and then for the harsher um, offense Five to fourteen, 14? years. There's also no option of okay. fine. Mm -hmm. Already, you know, the UNDP puts Nigeria at three thirty-four point six percent unequal. Unequal. So the gender inequality is real. So that means that these male lecturers have more power, have they more money, like, have yes. more connections. Yes. So if they were given an option of a fine, they'll just go mm -hmm. scot free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for the fact that they have to face what they've done squarely when they are convicted or indicted. Mm -hmm. It's a very good part of this bill, so that they don't just pay the fine and go away with it. Yeah. They, they have to face the music, and that's one thing that's very important in this. Welcome back everyone, my name is Indicato and I am with Genevieve Pelle, 
Gift and Ware and Lovelyn Umar, who are all who are exposed of Bayes University Lossa, yes. Bayes University Law Students Association. So, um, right before we left, Genevieve had finished giving us a lowdown of what the bill was about, and that was an excellent lowdown, Genevieve. And it's really opened our eyes to a lot of things. I, I think my favorite part of that was where you know they took out the clause that you know would put extensive punishment for cases of false reporting because we know once you leave that clause in we often say something in, in the CSO world that if a bill is being passed don't be excited you'll say the child rights act and you're like oh the child rights act has been passed you have to read what is inside because one single clause can cancel the entire homework or the entire hard work of the entire bill, you know. So I'm really glad that you did that breakdown. And yeah, lovely you were about to add something. Yeah, so I was about to say, um, I don't know if this is unknown to us, but these lecturers, before they get the jobs as lecturers in my institution, I don't know about the schools, you sign a contract. Yeah. And that contract contains that if you're caught with a student in an uncomfortable situation or if you have any form of relationship with that student, yeah. you are meant to be penalized. That means you lose your job. Yes. So there's no point in which I even feel like consent should even be like a defense because you have read the fine print in the contract. Yes. You assent it to meaning, okay, I want this job, I have read it. You know, um, basically, that's what um, will lead to the solutions that I'm about to talk about. Yeah, okay, so the lovely ones, let's talk yeah, about solutions. solutions. So, yes. the main thing about it is, um, for my institution, the main way we've been able to curb this issue, mm -hmm. this issue, like, I don't know if you guys remember the whole sex for grade we've seen in the The Boniface guy, there was a segregated place for lecturers to be yes. yes. that had the offices that, yeah, the, the cold room, room. Yes. there was, there was, there was space for them to carry out. Even, even his office, you, and it was like a logo. Yeah. Yeah. I hope people know what logo uh, is. Ah, yes. Or well, like a corner, like when you enter, then you enter. Exactly. Then you, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. So there was no good point now. And there's even a toilet in his office. Yes. A full toilet, a fridge, everything, like it's a segregated place. Really, yes. It's a whole office and it's not open. So I feel like the first thing I want to talk about is open offices for lecturers. Mm -hmm. I mean, why do they need enclosed places? What are they doing? In Bayes University, the office, some offices are opposite the dean's office. So yeah. that she can actually literally be seen in this Indian way to our yes. school. I mean, Dr. Sam's office is open. Why open? Um, everybody, even the dean's office is open to show you that okay we are watching you open we have a security windows, you don't have the space you exactly you don't have the space to do whatever you want so part of the solutions is i don't believe in having a building for lecturers to have their offices separate from the you don't know what's going on there you're not there there's no supervision obviously things will happen there's no security in, in base university every side is security camera and it's looking at you so imagine if we had a bonista boniface had the knowledge that there was a security camera, security camera. His, camera. Office. His, office, his office is see through exactly that see through office base university see through office let me explain the windows are low at the back and they are very wide yes, and then the door has this big glass that you can't cover yeah. it has this big glass and once anybody is passing they just turn left or turn right they can't see you. <laughs> to quote Dr. Kathleen Okafor, mm -hmm. that is the dean of um, you know, law faculty in my school, she said, if I see a lecturer with a student getting, like a student in a lecturer's office for more than 10 minutes, mm -hmm. I go and I find out what's happening there. Because yes. I have to be, I have to be the supervisor, I have to be on heat, I have to know that my lecturers are not giving yes. anything to these students. Yeah. So that's the first part of the solution is that I feel school should implement. I mean, Mr. Boniface would have, if not for that camera, he would have been able to do anything he wanted to do because it's He enjoyed it. He was so comfortable. He took, you know, there was no so tension. Something done. Was obviously something there was no tension. Done. I mean, if you were in an open office to even collect a number, you would be feeling, yes. is anybody looking at you? Know, is the window open? But that was something we had. He had he was like, sit in down there. and he prayed for that you. That man had made that place into a whole house. Dude, he a was, home. His that books were there as far as he coughed, change of clothes. I said, they push him, you sit down with his legs. So, it's, it's barbaric. You are telling, you know this is going on, and then you give them, they have a cold room. Look, that they one. They even have a space to go and take just... females. Then you're giving them room. Yeah. Secondly, um, I want to introduce the barcode system. Mm. They, it reduces the power. Like in base, there's nothing a lecturer could do for you. Mm. The highest power it has on you is your CA of 30. And your exam is seven months. So with or without 
you even writing a C, you can get an A, a clear A, because in base, if you have 70%, they will give you 70%. Yeah. They are not looking to bring you down. So imagine if, in, during the exam, we have this thing called the barcode where we have fingerprints, mm -hmm. we have our own barcode. Each student has a unique barcode, barcode yeah. that they scan. Then you have a fingerprint. Your name is not there. Your ID number is not there. Mm -hmm. So how will I know who I'm working? Mm -hmm. How will I fail somebody that refuses to have anything to do? Mm -hmm. It's not in your power. You mark, and then an another body reviews your marking. Mm -hmm. Yes, another international body reviews. That's why when base will send you your um, result, they'll be like, after um, this has been revised by this, this, this association, the result is now out. Mm -hmm. So that if there's any prejudice or anything, they would call you to bar like, okay, why did you fail to fail? Why did you, yeah. if you're following your marking scheme, this student is going to have an A. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are part of the things I feel like are solutions. Bring the barcode system. It's quite expensive. But, I mean, during a lecture, we can afford it to yeah. put and then vote. Then when it's time for, for students, for right, students. why yeah, can't they afford this it? There's joke that um, some communities don't have access to drinking water, don't have access to anything. The government cannot take development there, but they can take water. Exactly. They can they take water. They can take water. <laughs> and and yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Which is barbaric. So, so the government can afford it. This barcode system is meant for students of more than, like, it's meant for 10,000 people. And my school in the home is not up to 4,000. But they got it because why? They, their aim is everybody should be comfortable schooling. And protect. And protect. Exactly. If you fail, you fail. Lecturers are even your friends mm -hmm. and base. Like, you have a cordial child and parent or guardian and mm -hmm. relationship, which is fine. And, and you know, the, that comfort of that learning environment really helps students out. Yeah. My friends that went to base, Hi, Bookie Shani Barry, first class. <laughs> <laughs> first class, every time we see her, they're like, Bookie, first class. And I wonder if I had, if I had the same opportunity when I was in federal school, perhaps it would have been better, better for me. I was giving the story of a lecturer yesterday who once entered class, and we've been told that this man was, you know, he used to sexually harass female students and all of that. And to the point that when we were having his first class, all of us, the girls in the class, refused to put makeup. We refused to do makeup on our faces. We rubbed like oil on our face, tied our hair. And the man in that class, and instead of talking, and then he goes, Wait, why is everybody so ugly in this class? I can't take this. Why? You will not. He just walked out of the class. That was it. And he ended up, you know what, I don't want to say more, but if I'm not going to push it in, you know what, let's say it. He ended up being my supervisor, and it was, it was quite tough. He didn't do anything to me, but the trauma alone of knowing that this he person could. was my supervisor. I remember yeah. breaking down and I would not dress up, I wouldn't do it just because of, of this person. I can imagine those who ended up being victims. We had other lecturers who had a lot of things that I didn't even know because I was really underage in university. I didn't know what was happening. It was after school I heard of people who I trusted were harassing girls. You know, They were the ones I was like, are you serious? So this could really be anyone. Okay. There's no, oh, he's too good of a lecturer, he's this or she, she's that, they cannot do this, they can't do that. If students report these things, please believe students, because the way the power equation is set up, oh it's very difficult for a victim to open their mouth and say, this is happening to me. It's very difficult. If somebody actually has that courage in Nigeria University, knowing that your name is out oh. there, everything is working against you. Our job is to, to believe that person exactly. and help the person get through. I don't yeah. think to, to add to that, sorry, mm -hmm. but I think we should actually give a um, base university like terms of because they are really, really trying when it has to do with um, protecting students. Mm -hmm. um, using our project, for example, because I'm a 500 level student, mm -hmm. they put students at the spot mm -hmm. to do their work to um, be efficient mm. so they don't have to like ask you oh for sex so anything you get that is what you actually yes, deserve yeah. and I think um, leaving it only for maybe the legislative arm to maybe um, enact laws is not enough the school universities just or not only private but also public universities should like try and enforce um, this issue of um, sexual harassment yeah. we have orientation programs but from um, different orientation programs I've attended, not just my schools and orientation program, but other universities orientation pro um, programs, you find out that they talk about other things, excluding sexual harassment. Yes. So they tell you, oh, don't yes. go late, um, don't go out and um, late, um, have good friends, yes. don't do this, don't do that. What about the crucial um, 
Yeah. The crucial problem they are facing in the Nigerian institutions. Yeah. Why are they not talking about sexual um, um, harassment? So most students may be like, I don't even know anything exists like that in our institution. Some universities will want to come out to say, oh, we have this um, particular document that protects students. We have this that protects. But no students will even know about students, what yes. is already put in exactly. place. So if the orientation programs, they should like have priorities. This is the crucial um, problem. They should talk more about sexual harassment than um, diverting to other things. I won't say they are not relevant, but, but they are not so relevant. Tell like, oh, um, your, your friend should be this, your friend should be that. Yeah, they are important, but then talk about sexual yeah, harassment, how to protect the key thing so within this the system. What's the key and you're right, most of the things we are told about, they say peer pressure, as you are here, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, enjoy, don't follow them and go and drink. No, that's, thanks for the advice. But within the system, this is what I'll most likely face. And yeah. we should, so we should, I think that, you know, when, once this com comes out, the gov once this bill is passed, and hopefully it gets fully passed, that the government should actually work towards implementation, yeah. ensuring that this orientation happens within the system. There are certain guidelines for these units, these uh, sexual harassment yeah. units in universities to follow. Yeah. And certain things that are out of, like, before I go on, before we start interviews, I like, can tell people the areas that are no-go areas. Don't come here victim blaming, don't do this, don't do that. And most people, was it loving of who that said, mm. victims don't feel comfortable? Or it, yeah, I think it's true, yes, of gifts that said it, talking to the older generation. Because you know what you are going to meet. Exactly. They'll tell you, what were you wearing? These girls, so, I imagine going to a place that you went to report something, and they just keep you saying, but see her makeup self. <laughs> it's not this one that before she enters my class, she Nigeria knows. has a way of, of <laughs> using <laughs> other things to cover, or cover yes, what so exactly they must They about. must go through extensive yes. um, um, extensive education and there must be a, a task for a bureau, whatever it is, yeah. to watch this, this, um, this committees or um, set, 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 up, set up within the within yeah. the schools. I uh, think uh, also yeah. there should be like a register, um, like a register mm -hmm. that um, the perpetrators need to be written there and publish to shame them. Well that falls into, I don't know if people were, were aware that on the first day of 16 days of, um, um, 16 days of activism, mm -hmm. NAPTIP in collaboration with you know, the Ministry of Women and Affairs and I, th I think you and was there too. Many women organizations stand to end break on that they have been working on this um, sexual mm -hmm. sex offenders list mm -hmm. register. And it's actually there, I think www.naptip, or is it? I think this is sex, no, naptip.gov.government.ng or one of those exactly. two things. So you go check it out. There's a sex, sex offenders register. That sex offenders register, when convicted, your name will be there for everybody to see. If you, if you have a running case and your you're going to be there. your name will be there, but it will be everybody that will see, but mm -hmm. all law enforcement agencies will see. We'll see. Mm -hmm. And that thing, yes, you see what that, that, that register helps with is sometimes people have done recurring crimes, but the system keeps no record, so you won't know it. So maybe if he has done it in Calabar before, he now does it in Abuja, he now does it in Abuja. They will be able to trace law enforcement. They say, okay, we have seen this person's name somewhere because most of these cases are treated as isolated issues mm -hmm. because somebody was silent here, somebody didn't say this here. So let's put that register out. And it's also up to us to amplify these things. Exactly. We must talk about it every time. We must amplify the register. The, the first name that I've dropped there, I think Ekiti State has a sex offenders register and there's a name there already. The man has, yes, I think he has been convicted. He should have been convicted. And his name is. Yeah. And you see, ma'am, um, they, 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 they don't even see yeah, the thing yeah. as a shameful thing anymore. It's like a thing of pride. My friend also does it. Or it's all of us. Like the, the, the thing of pride is because there's no repercussion. Pride, exactly. There's no repercussion. So the perpetrators get to define what it is yeah. for them. In Nigeria, yeah. they put lecturers here and there's students here. There's no, yes. There's well, no like, repercussion. You know? So when you are doing something and you know there's no repercussion, it's now a it's thing a of thing power. Of yes. It's a power thing. Rape is a power equation thing. Yes. Yes. So, it's a thing of okay, yeah. so you can come up with your friends like ah that one, don't touch him. There's no repercussion. But when you know that you can go to jail for this thing, that's when when the first person goes, eh? The shame that comes with it. Yeah. When somebody is passing, if you have tried anything, you're able to say it out again. So is that lack of justice, the lack of repercussion for people, the perpetrators who do this mm -hmm. thing, that make them feel like okay, I can now that power that power I felt when sexually harassing, raping, molesting this person, I can feel it outside because nobody is calling me to order. Yeah. But once we add repercussion to the issue, people will be called to, to order. Genevieve, is there anything you want to add? Um, also, the issue of male allies. I think that's mm -hmm. a very helpful thing. Because mm -hmm. 
male allies are people that can further the conversation in a way that we, the females, might not be able to. Yeah. Because, like you talked about the cold room mm -hmm. and all those places. So if there's a male ally mm -hmm. in these universities on the board of um, the institution's uh, redress committee mm -hmm. or in the police stations everywhere, mm -hmm. the places, the first port of call for the victim, if there are male allies there, then they can either indicate, they mm -hmm. can call out and they can educate other men. Mm -hmm. So if they educate other men, at least it will make that those crass jokes in their old boys clubs mm -hmm. less. Yeah. And it will be less of a reward for them to mm -hmm. say such things out loud mm -hmm. because they won't get a high five anymore. They'll get a gross look. Yeah. Then if it is that they suspect or they know that one of their um, colleagues, lecturers or police uh, personnel have yeah. done something like yeah. that, then they can name those people mm -hmm. because they are inside. Mm -hmm. They know the system and mm -hmm. they know how the system covers yeah. things up. And, then, and on the same note of allies, generally more allies should be highlighted. They shouldn't be um, made fun of in the media or something. <laughs> yeah. So even religious leaders that want to speak up on this, even if they don't fully want to speak up, but if they're encouraged to do so, it will make sure that their congregants or the people that follow them will know that this thing is frowned upon because Nigeria is still a very morally uh, central yes. nation. Yeah. So if something appeals to our moral values, we are more likely to consider it. But if it's just something, oh, these people, they say this, and then you don't hear it from any other person, no one is enforcing it. Mm -hmm. If you go to church, if you go to the mosque, if you go to any place of prayer, and you hear that they're, they're saying or they're talking about these things, especially those people that have these heavy titles, yeah. priests, imam, and all, this thing will make them, both the men that do this and the victims, mm -hmm. will make the men, det uh, will serve as a deterrent to the men, and it might make the victims bolder. Mm -hmm. Bold enough to speak up yeah. Yeah. if they know that they have this support. And also, an issue of support, there are support groups. Exactly. In this country, there are, there's little to no support. So apart from um, support groups for the victims who have suffered from this kind of thing, mm -hmm. support groups for their families should also yeah, be provided, so it should families and friends, to make sure that it's not when she finishes getting the support, she goes home to face <laughs> and battle and yes. Mm -hmm. And some people won't even come near her, some, some family members won't visit them anymore or something. Mm -hmm. So if the whole family is involved yeah. in dealing with their it's internalized true. anger, confusion, yeah. all those things, when they can get it out, then it will reduce the level of stigmatization yeah. around this. So if you know someone that is in a support group or you, you yourself are in a support group, you might be less insensitive to the victim's plight. Yeah. So if you have these support groups, you can also go ahead to, in, to make sure that there are more rehabs, both from NGOs, from the government. Yeah. Well, what, yeah. Rehabilitation centers are important for, for survivors of such trauma, yeah. because if it is that a person is making up with, waking up with night sweats or has mm -hmm. nightmares because of these things, it can lead to severe mental issues in future. Yeah. It can lead to so much instability in a woman's life. And the education she might have gotten might now be wasted because yeah. the mental health is not focused on. So rehab centers should be set up to make sure that she's reintegrated mm -hmm. in the society in a way where she's prepared again to face life. Mm -hmm. Like you said, um, the trauma of going to that supervisor's office and all was mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. So if there was even a counselor in the university mm -hmm. that you could go to exactly. to say, okay, reclaim your confidence, head up, chin up, you know, stand up for yourself, so, continue. Yeah. You know, those kind of things can help someone, help someone to really um, move on. So I, she made a point, sorry, she made a point about um, male allies and she said, you know, they, they would put a, she said something, I don't want that to be misconstrued. The truth about it is we are in an unequal society mm -hmm. and sometimes if a woman says this is happening, mm -hmm. many people won't listen to her. If a man says the same thing, people mm -hmm. will say, oh, look at what this person has said, this mm -hmm. has to be right and all of that. So let's put that into consideration. So um, the this last thing I would mm -hmm. one kind of thing. the last thing I'd like to add is the issue of, um, oh, I'm handing over my child to this lecture.
-hmm. You know, that was the main issue that um, that BBC something brought about because yeah, so most people were important. like your mom because they knew that I have a relationship. Dear parents, we should try and know that, okay, these people are handing over to we might think they are saints, they are adults, they have, you know, this understanding, they want to help, but we are the ones literally taking them to put them in that position. position. Come back. So, Lovely was telling us about... Um, yes, yeah, okay. so I was talking about the situation where parents give, okay, say, okay, my child is near this university, I know a professor, I know a lecturer, let me hand over my child to that lecturer, the child will be safe. Supervise their parents um, is doing more harm than good these days because at the end of the day I have a friend this is a personal thing she is in base now but she was in food now and then her mom went oh um, I'm handing you over to the dean uh, not to the H something HOD of the faculty or something to take care of you I've known him for a while this girl was tormented wow. by a lot of lecturers that she had to leave in 300 level she was she was carrying over again and again and again and again and this is somebody that is brilliant wow. to the core you know she, she went to school and then it was him he started with him and then he was in that high position not just a lecturer mm. in this position reported to Sorry. reported Sorry. to um, reported to um, higher authorities the, the, mm. the more she went to report the more the next person is also making advances. advances. It was wow. that bad that wow. she left to be. So I was trying to bring that into consideration. Their parents, we should stop the issue of, you know, giving a handing over. But sometimes it works, mm -hmm. but sometimes I've heard really nasty stories. stories. Really, really, really nasty I, stories. I do this thing where I say that, like, for my kids, yes. nobody is your uncle, nobody is your aunt. Exactly. Except we are related. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't, when I talk about it on Facebook, I tell people, you're not allowed to smack my kid. It does not take a village because obviously the village is not keeping my, my child safe anymore. Yeah. So when they say well, it takes a village to raise a child, child, it doesn't take a village, I'm fine. You're not allowed to touch my kid. And I think we should raise people with that because it seems like as an African child, as you're great, everybody, you owe everybody yeah. respect yeah. everywhere you owe everybody. You turn up here, you have to show allegiance. You turn up there, you have to. Oh, this person knows your mom. Therefore, that person from 10 years ago will show up and say, you know, <laughs> <laughs> say, ah. Those ones will show up. Now, thank you. You know, and you just have to start going. And these, these terms, these things create, give, give predators, you know, a safe, a, a place where people feel yeah. safe around yeah. them. And what you're supposed to do, I'm not saying no, we must raise everybody with fear, but I mean, it's the world we are in today. Your, your child must know, okay, look, you need to be careful. This person is not your uncle, the person does not get the uncle name. That person is not your aunt. This person is not related to us. Mm -hmm. Call everybody by name. I call everybody their decent human respect, mm -hmm. their, their humanity. But beyond that, nothing. Don't allow, if, if the first person that should be listened to, that is how parents should know that even to adults, adults with their children should be able to trust them. Mm -hmm. The first person that should be listened to mm -hmm. is the child. Mm -hmm. So if a child comes and tells you somebody beats them, that person should not feel comfortable to tell your parents, this is what you did, therefore I beat, I didn't no, give you that, I, I didn't give you that mandate. Exactly. So and it's from there people yeah. start learning to shut down. I can't talk because yeah. my parents will take the side of the person. Exactly. I can't do this because, and so we must just on our own, First things first, just get that out of the table. In research even showed that about 60 or 70 percent of people that are being raped mm -hmm. or people that are raped are for people you trust. Of yeah. course! Of course! It's, it's not, it's not it even the strangers anymore. It takes a certain level of violence for strangers to, like, yes. it's arm robbery, all of yes. those things. It's, Before stranger will, ac exactly. will access you, gun, knife, mm -hmm. most of it happens in the home. Mm -hmm. Yes. In the home, the people who come around, really, uncle, 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 family, friends, friend, who you are don't know, my uncle, you have learned to trust. Come and sit on my lap, our oh, wife. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That, so, yeah. if somebody, if you even watch the documentary, Boniface was trying to make her comfortable. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to make her, you know, have his fatherly. Yes. 
So it's not about taking your child there anymore. The, your child will be fine. Don't go and drop them with somebody that will give that them. Is a yes. And then one day you're just sitting with your child, maybe 20 years after, and she was like, Mommy, do you know that this professor actually was raped me? How would you feel? You made that possible. I know that it's from good intentions, but parents need to know there's no harm right now. Yes. My friend was dropped up, and now she's in base, like in 200, but she's happy. Yes. It was better than the torment. Her I GPA remember. was dropping Many drastic. of us, I mean, I'm sure you're seeing a lot of people in your drastic. school who are out to get second degrees because many people went through hell. Exactly. In, and grown people, some have entered office, have done exploits yeah. in life, are coming to get degrees again. I'm not saying masters, another degree are fresh yeah. because of some of these things and the problems they cause yeah. for, yeah. for students. Yeah. Oh well, so we've come to the end. The sad end. <laughs> but sorry, before we end, mm -hmm. I would like to refer us to sexual assault referral centers. Centers, yes. SARCs. Yeah. Or you can also visit their website on www.herstory.ng. I'm sure we will begin to um, send yes. you and help you at all times. Thank you so much. Um, her story. Okay, her story. Your story. Is it your story or our story? Our story. Her story. Our story. story. Yes. Okay. Dot. Her story. Our story. Dot. Ng. And this is under under Rolak, I think, with the E. Mm -hmm. And they're doing wonderful work. Um, there are sexual um, sexual assault referral centers in Abuja. Lagos, of course, is the home of this. Like Lagos has figured it out so well. But do check her story. Our story. Dot. Ng. Thank you for bringing that up for ways in which you can seek help, share your story, get help. And please, let us help break the stigma. You are not alone. We are all here with you. I'm really, really happy about the conversation we've had today because, man, if we millennials thought we had it in the bag, obviously, generation, is this Z they call you people? <laughs> you people have gone, no? And it's, it's on a whole other level. And I'm just proud about what I'm hearing from university students today because when I was in university, didn't know any of this stuff. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Genevieve. Thank you, Gift. Thank you, Lovelyn. Really happy to have you here today. And with the quality of this conversation, I'll invite you people back again another day. There's so many things for us to talk about. And I think normalizing the fact that really young women understand these things is important to us. And so I may bring you here on social media bill, another bill. Because you people are really good at this stuff. And I'm happy that. Our generation, oh, we're not the same generation again. <laughs> I'm happy that this generation actually gets it. And for you and to actually name you people generation equality, it means you could not come to play and you have shown that you didn't come to play. So thank you so much for staying with us. My name is Indy Kato. This, of course, is supported by Open Society Initiative West Africa. Thank you so much for your effort for, to help us in helping us educate people on 16 days of activism. See you next.